If you want to see how I achieve this set, keep watching. Okay, what you see here is I've already started because I didn't plan on recording a video of me actually extending the length of my previous set that I had on. But I wanted to go ahead and show you all how to do that. So what I'm doing is actually using forms, placing them as you normally would when applying a normal sculpted set. And I just add it to the length that I want using whatever acrylic color or whatever designs or whatever I want on I go ahead and place that on the nail as you can see I'm doing I'm actually going in my clear acrylic and I'm actually encapsulating this glitter nail that I created if you can see my ring finger and my pinky finger are the old set that I had on and I wanted to actually make them longer uh, I'm used to having longer nails, so it was really an adjustment for me when I had those shorter ones. So I'm just showing you now how they actually look sculpted on the forms. So right here, what you see me doing is actually building the apex of the nail and building the very tip um, you don't want to leave any part of the nail too thin and that is because when your nails are a lot longer they are more prone to breakage so you want to just make sure you um, place enough acrylic in a thick enough form where you don't have to worry about it actually chipping or breaking during the wear of the nails So here I'm using the best forms that I have ever tried in my life. They are from enailcouture.com. They're from Max Estrada's line. And I'm actually placing that on the next finger that I'll be actually sculpting the length out. These forms stick so well. They attach very easily. And they're very, very, very reasonable price. I got a total of 250 and they were like $13.99 I think. So that was a very great deal for those. And when I say these are some great forms, these are some great forms. So yeah, um, what you see me doing is just squeezing it into the shape that I want. Um, these are long stiletto nail forms. Um, they do come in different sizes and shapes, but these are the actual only ones that he sells on his website. But they do make other nail forms from other companies. I preferably love stiletto nails, so that's what I actually ordered. Here I'm going back in with my yellow acrylic and I'm just building that apex again. Because I don't like my nails to be too thin. I do like a thickness to my nails. Like I said, because I wear them long and just throughout my day, I'm constantly bumping my nails or doing something. So I don't want to end up having to break them too easily. Here, if you're actually wondering whether I'm just applying the acrylic on the nails without actually prepping, I have already went in previously. Like I said, I didn't plan on recording this video, but after I started, I went on ahead and, you know, pressed the play button. But I previously already uh, pushed my cuticles back and dehydrated and primed my nails. So, um, you don't actually see me doing that step as I'm actually applying the acrylic here.
Here I'm just applying the acrylic to this nail. I'm actually completely extending this nail in yellow. That is going to be the base color of this nail. And then I'll go back and encapsulate it with clear acrylic. The size brush that I use actually in all of my videos is a number 20 um, oval Kalinsky brush. Those are my favorite brushes. They're easier for me to work with to apply acrylic. I see a lot of nail technicians, they use smaller brushes such as the size 12 and 14 to do a full set. Um, I just cannot adjust to those size brushes. I like the bigger brushes and that's what I'm actually using to achieve this set in this video and all of the sets that you actually see on this channel. So for my color acrylic, the yellow that I'm using and also the purple and the blues and things that I use to create this set is from a young lady named Janari. She sells uh, custom made acrylics, glitters, all kind of things. Um, she's a nail supplier. Very, very professional, excellent product. She has monomer and things as well. And her name, her nail company is Luxury Nail Supplies. Um, you can actually find her on Facebook. She is awesome. So um, I actually come back in another video and do a review of her products and you know show you all a lot of the things that she has in her shop. And just a little tip so you won't actually overwork yourself at the end when it's time to file. When you're actually applying your acrylic, you want to lay it as evenly and as smoothly as you can. Um, sometimes that just doesn't happen and it's okay if you mess up because you can correct that. But it's better to do that before you actually get to the filing part so you won't actually overwork yourself. Okay, again, I'm actually doing my pinky finger on this hand, and I'm applying the nail form. You want to make sure you place it up under the nail and put it, put it as close to your um, the, the free edge of your natural nail. And you want to start pressing in the very bottom parts, as you see me doing. And then you want to just shape the top part into the width and the, and the um, length that you actually want it. Again, these are the best nail forms that I have ever worked with. When I tell you they are secure, they stick, they don't move or don't budge when you're applying your acrylic. I mean just that these are the best forms that you can actually purchase in my experience with nail forms. Here I'm just removing the nail forms because um, they kind of get in your way after a while once you get into your last finger or whatever. So I just move them because the nails have fully set. They um, are ready to file. But I'm actually finishing up this last nail on my hand. And then I'll actually do the filing and stuff. Okay, if you notice in the back where my monomer is in my dapping dishes, when you're working with colored acrylics, 
depending on where you get your colors from or the brand some are very very pigmented and those colors from those pigments can transfer into your monomer so when you're working with clear acrylics after you work with the colored acrylics you want to make sure you're changing out your monomer because that color can transfer into that clear or other colors that you use and it can actually um, change the color of whatever you're actually working with so you want to make sure you're just changing that color out when you're switching between colors changing that monomer out when you switch in between colors And right here, as I'm actually sculpting this nail, you see me pressing in the sides of it because you want your shape of your nail to stay in the stiletto form. What it actually ends up happening is when you place your acrylic onto the form, sometimes it actually drains off to the side. But you want to make sure you're actually taking your brush and pushing it back into the shape that the nail is supposed to be. When you get close to your cuticle, you want to make sure you're not working with a bee that's too wet with actually draining to your cuticle because you don't actually want that acrylic to touch the skin. So what you're going to actually be doing is placing it and you're going to keep your finger down on an angle towards you if you're actually doing it yourself or um, towards your body if you're actually doing a client so that that acrylic before it sets it won't drain into your cuticle area. Here what you actually see me doing is I dipped my brush into some acetone and just cleaned up around my cuticle because I did get a little monomer on my skin. So when you get that on your skin you immediately want to take it off. So I just suggest use some acetone uh, which is probably your closest thing on your nail station and just remove it from around your cuticle area.
So here on this nail, I wanted to add some glitter, so I'm just going into one of the glitter mixes that I have. I'm actually not sure which one to tell you right now it is. But I'm actually going in with that, just applying it to the top of the nail. And then I actually go back in and encapsulate it with clear acrylic. So now I'm just removing this nail form. This video was extremely difficult to record and sculpt my nails at the same time because I'm actually working off of a tripod that's connected to my nail station. And it's very difficult to keep everything into camera view, um, holding my hand on certain angles. So I'm still working that part out about filming videos for you all. Um, but I know you all can see it and hear me clearly and things like that. But that's one of the areas I know I definitely have to improve in. Um, and as you can see, my nails I've just shown you. Because of that, me having to hold my hand on awkward angles, I wasn't able to sculpt them as perfectly as I would like. So this calls for me to actually put in a lot more work in shaping. And another FYI, um, just to prevent you having to do what I'm doing, I do have some brand new files. Um, I just wasn't able to get up to get them, so I was using one that I had on my station. That kind of actually doled out, um, and it wasn't as gritty as it needed to be for me to actually remove those sidewalls without having to really, really put muscle into it. So that's a word of advice to you. Just make sure you have, you know, some pretty decent nail files when actually going back in to clean up the nails after you finish applying all of your acrylic and of course those of you that use the e-file it'll be a lot quicker to actually clean it up but you can also use that as an option as well i actually use both e-files and nail files in my videos and when i'm doing clients and myself i like them both and you're going to see me work with both of them in this video so yeah i'm just showing you the nails that's how they look after they're actually shaped correctly that's how it should look and um after i actually go back in and clean up around each nail and shape it how i want it then i'll go back in with my e-file and i'll go under my nails and i'll smooth out everything that's under there and clean it up and i'll actually insert a picture and show you how that looks later on once i get to that part And here what I'm doing, I'm just checking all angles of the nail. You want to make sure your apex and everything is built to perfection. You want to make sure your tip is not 
uh, too thin because you want to avoid breakage and things like that. So you just want to turn your fingers and you know kind of eyeball each angle of the nail and make sure it's to your liking. This is the other hand that I'll actually be showing you as well in this video. So it's going to be a pretty lengthy video, but it's a very a video, you know, very well worth the wow. Um, and I say that because you can get a lot of pointers and tips and things um, from watching and things. It's pretty much one of those videos where um, I did I chose to do a voiceover because I can actually. Um, describe things a lot more thoroughly that way versus having all the background noise that I normally have in the shop. So now I'm just going in with the file and sharpening up those edges. This is how the nail looks up under where you sculpt it. They're not, of course, the prettiest sight that you see there, but I'll actually go in and clean them up a lot more and smooth them out underneath, uh, we'll out, which I'll insert a picture later on to actually show you how I've cleaned those up, uh, where you can't tell too much that you've extended your nail bed. But yeah, guys, if you definitely don't want to put in all the wrist work, that I actually put in into this video um, make sure you have your nail files handy if not have any at all please make sure you have some it will save you a lot of arm muscles in the end Here I actually sped the video up quite a bit just to get through the fouling and smoothing of that nail. So with this set, like I said, this is the difference between both hands. I've had this other set um, for about two weeks, and I knew definitely it was time to do something new with my hands because that length was just killing me, and I needed something longer. So this video was much needed for both you and I. So you guys, I really don't know what happened to the rest of the footage from the other hand that I did where I actually used the e-files and things like that. But this is the finished look of me shaping them all with the file and the e-file. And um, now I'm just coming in showing you that I'll be designing my nails with some holographic comb. And um, yeah, so we're going to get to that. I've already 
sprayed my hand down with alcohol and just made sure all the dust and stuff was gone off the nails and then I used my nail nails UV L well UV LED top coat um, that cures in 60 seconds and I actually applied that to all of the nails and that's actually what I used to apply the chrome as well so once those cured I just used my holographic chrome and then eyeshadow applicator and I just rubbed it into the nail and as you can see you actually see the holographic um, design of that forming And once you finish applying your holographic chrome, then you want to go over it with that same top coat that I inserted a picture of or the top coat of your choice. And you want to top coat that and cure that for another 60 seconds so that your holographic chrome will not rub off. So here's the finished result of both of my hands where I extended all 10 fingers using nail forms and those of the holographic nails in this picture. I did go in with my cuticle oil and that was also from enailcouture.com. That was the cotton candy cuticle oil. Um, it smells so, 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 so good. Um, so like I said, y'all, this is my set. I really did enjoy doing these, um, extending my nail bed just because I was so tired of the short ones. But I hope you guys like the video, rate, comment, subscribe. Any questions, positive comments, leave them in the details section and I'll respond to them as promptly as I can. And I'll see you guys.